If there are brook trout where you fish, this is a must-have streamer. To start this pattern, we'll grab some ultra thread in 140 in fluorescent orange and secure it to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of the hook. Next, we will grab a golden pheasant cape, select a single feather and secure it to the back of the fly. Continue securing it to our hook shank, fold the excess over, and wrap up towards the head of the fly. We'll fold our excess back over and secure it tightly to the head of the fly, snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some brassy wire, here I'm using hot orange. Secure this to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, we will return our thread to the head of the fly Grabbing some peacock curl, we'll select about four fibers, secure them to the head of the fly, once again wrapping them back towards the tail. Once complete, we'll use our thread to completely cover any visible feathers as we wrap up towards the head of the fly. If you'd like, you can secure some floss to the body to accomplish the same thing. However, I prefer to use thread. Once the body is built up and we've reached the head of our fly, grab your peacock curl, folding it over the back of our fly and securing it tightly in place. Snip the excess free and grab your brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly. If your peacock curl begins to twist in the process, just simply push it back into place and continue securing with your wire. Take your time with this step and try to make sure the wire is evenly spaced. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. We will whip finish, snipping our orange thread free. We will then grab some ultra thread in black, securing this to the head of our fly. Snip your excess free and grab a white bucktail. Select a small clump of fur about the size of your streamer and secure it tightly to the head of our fly. To do so, we'll take a loop around the fur prior to tightening it down on the head of the fly. This will help prevent the deer hair from spinning around our hook. With the deer hair secure, we'll tighten it down and snip the excess free. Cover any exposed fur and take your time not to build up too much thread. Next, we will grab some red feathers selecting a small clump and tying it onto the throat of our fly. Secure tightly, snip the excess free, and grab a white goose feather. Cut a small portion free and tie it onto the bottom of our fly. With it lightly secured, we can move it to where we would like it to be and secure it tightly. Snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything in place. And this is a baby brook trout. I like to use this pattern most in backcountry brook trout ponds. However, it also works well anywhere you find brook trout and in the fall. If you'd like to support the channel and try this fly, you can visit my website below or submit a custom order. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying up a fly pattern that you won't wanna be without if you happen to run into this hatch. To start, we'll use a makeshift tube vise and grab some yellow foam. Cut out a small section and carefully push your pin through the middle of it. With this complete, we'll grab some white thread and use this to secure the foam tightly to the pin. Snap your excess free and grab some olive elk hair. We'll select a small clump and secure it to the top of our foam. To help position it, we'll take an additional two wraps around it before securing it in place. Ensure that you secure tightly with your thread Pull everything backwards, beginning to wrap your thread backwards in open spirals, ensuring that the elk hair stays at the top of the foam, and continue to do so until we reach the tip, at which point we'll secure tightly and continue back towards the head of the pin, once again in open spirals, wrapping in between our previous wraps. With this complete, we'll secure everything tightly in place and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free, and this will be the extended body. Carefully pull everything free, removing your pin and replacing it with a hook. I like to use an emerger style hook, 
generally in a size 10. We'll swap over to a pale yellow thread, continue wrapping, laying down a thread base, and returning your thread to the head of the fly. At which point, we'll grab some pale yellow dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic blend, create a dubbing noodle, and begin to wrap this over the top of our thread base. Creating a small buildup of thread at the back of the fly. We'll use this to help prop up our extended body, placing it on top of our hook shank and securing it tightly in place. With this complete, we'll grab some more dubbing, create another dubbing noodle, and wrap this just in front of our extended body. Once again, creating a small buildup of dubbing for our next step and brush it out slightly to help blend it into the body. Next, we'll grab some CDC feathers, here I'm using the color sulfur, securing it tightly to the top of the hook shank. I also like to take a single thread wrap behind it to help prop the feather upwards. Once secure, snip your excess free and add some more dubbing just in front of our CDC feather. We'll then grab some crystal flash, here I'm using an olive color, Select four fibers and secure them just off to the side of your fly. Fold the other side over and secure it to the other side. With this complete, we'll snip everything to length, trim it up a bit, and add another CDC feather. This time, we'll have it be a bit longer than the previous one. Secure it tightly to your hook shank and grab a single strand of a saddle hackle. Here I'm using a yellow. Strip some excess fibers free and secure it to the side of your hook shank. Snip your excess free and grab some olive legs. Fold over a single strand and secure them to either side of your fly. Take a single thread wrap to help hold it in place while you position your legs. Once happy, secure it tightly in place and snip everything to length. Next, we'll grab some wood duck or dyed mallard flanks, pulling the fibers backwards and stripping the excess free. This should leave you with two tips that look something like this. We'll start by securing the flank to one side of the fly at a 45 degree angle and then doing the same to the other side and securing them both tightly in place. To help prop them upwards, we can also take a few thread wraps behind them and snip the excess free. We'll create another dubbing noodle and use this to wrap it in behind our mallard flank to continue to help to prop it upwards. With this complete, we'll continue dubbing the body until we reach the hook eye. Next, we'll grab our saddle hackle and begin to hackle it forward, first behind the mallard flank, between it, and then continue hackling until you reach the head of the fly. Secure with your thread, and this is my favorite eastern green drake pattern. Some of my more memorable fishing experiences has been using this exact pattern. Although you have to time the hatches perfectly, if you end up finding the green drakes hatching, you won't want to be without it. So I'd highly suggest keeping some in your fly box from the end of June until about the third week of July, depending on your elevation. And I hope that some of you get to experience that this year. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying a realistic caddis larva hosted by the winner of our latest Discord challenge, Ties Flies. You can see the links to his social media in the comments below. To start this pattern, we'll grab some 140 UTC, secure it to our hook shank, and continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook. We'll reverse our thread direction back to the head of the fly. Next, we'll grab some monofilament line. If you don't have a spool, this is the equivalent of a four pound. Secure it to your hook shank and wrap to the tail of your fly. Once complete, reverse your thread's direction back to your starting point. Next up, we'll grab some brown ostrich hurl, securing it carefully to the underside of the fly and wrapping towards our monofilament. Once again, returning our thread to the original position. Next, we'll begin to build up a smooth body transition towards the head of the fly, ensuring to leave yourself a little room for our next steps. Once happy, we'll grab some latex, secure it to our fly, wrapping back towards our other materials. And return your thread to the original position. At which point we can whip finish, snip our thread free, switching it over to a thinner black thread. 
secure to your hook shank, and snip the excess free. Next up, we'll grab our latex and begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals, slightly overlapping the previous wrap. This will help build a transition towards our thread, as well as give the fly a unique segmentated look. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the material, and snipping the excess free. Wrap back on the latex slightly, grabbing your ostrich hurl and lightly securing it to the head of the fly. We're only using this step to help hold it in place while we grab our monofilament wire to further secure it and add some durability. Try to have your monofilament rest in the grooves of the latex that we just created. This will help increase its segmented look and continue to do so until you reach your thread, at which point we can secure, snipping both the monofilament and ostrich hurl free. Next, we'll grab a pheasant tail, ripping off a single fiber and securing it to the side of your fly. Grab another fiber and slide it up your thread to help secure it to the other side. Once happy, use your thread to secure both in place, holding them backwards to help give them a brush back orientation. Wrap your thread forward and repeat this process a second time. Once you reach the head of the fly, we'll grab two more pheasant tail fibers and secure them facing out from the hook eye with a similar process that we used previously. Once happy, secure in place by whip finishing both behind your legs, fold them backwards and add a few extra whip finishes just in front. Snip your thread free and trim up all the remaining fibers, being careful not to snip off any of the legs that we intend to leave. With this complete, we'll grab a pair of tweezers, grabbing the fibers in the middle, bending them and pushing them back on themselves to help give them a more buggy appearance. Paint over the back with some UV resin to add some durability, fix with a UV light, and grab a Sharpie. Use your Sharpie to paint over the back of the fly, giving the upper section a two-tone look. To win six of these flies and Tied by Ty's Flies himself, along with six of my vinyl stone flies. All you have to do is leave a comment, hashtag flies below, and for a second chance to win, click the link in the comments to visit Ty's Flies. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying up one of the best variations of the band Squirmy Worm. We'll start with some hot pink thread. Snip the excess free, securing the bead in place using some lead-free wire. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll take a few wraps forward and grab some stretchy material. Here I'm using a rubber D-rib. However, I would suggest using a stretchy dental band that I've linked in the comments. Create a loop with your material and secure it to the back of the fly. Make sure your loop secured tightly by taking securing wraps both in front as well as behind your loop and continue towards the head of the fly. Snip one of your excess bands free once again continuing towards the head of the fly. We'll fold our rubber material backwards, take a few securing wraps towards the head of the fly, and once again create a loop in our rubber band, using your thread to secure it lightly in place at first. This way, by pulling on the opposite end, we can shrink the loop to the size we're looking for. Once happy, secure in place with your thread and continue wrapping towards the bend of the hook. Snip your excess free and use your thread to smooth out the body. Finishing at the head of the fly. Hold everything in place by whip finishing, snip your thread free, and paint over everything with some UV resin to add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix in place with the UV light and grab some spare wire. Use the wire to string it through the two loops that we just created and open up the loops at the end using a pair of tweezers. Next, we'll grab some squirmy wear material. Here I'm using pink insert it through our loop and begin pulling the wire to help draw the squirmy worm material through the two loops. They should be quite tight to hold it in place. Once complete, remove the wire, snip the squirmy worm material to length, and this is an improved squirmy worm, suggested by Tim from the Trout and Feather. I've linked his full video in the comments below. It's an excellent pattern that promotes a lot of movement in the water and also can be replaced if the fish chew it up. I would highly suggest giving it a try. And as always, if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Subscribe for more 
and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's most used and popular fly patterns. To tie it, we'll start off with some brown thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook and grab some pheasant tail. We'll grab about five or six fibers, measure them to be roughly the length of the hook shank, and secure them to the back of the fly. Once complete, we'll continue wrapping towards the bead, further securing the pheasant tail as we go. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into your bead and secure wrapping back towards the tail. We'll bring our thread forward just past the hook point, grab some more pheasant tail and secure it to our hook shank once again wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping our pheasant tail forward in closed touching spirals. You can do so by just wrapping it around with your fingers. However, if your vise has a rotary function, this makes the process far easier. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the pheasant tail in place and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward, counter wrapping our pheasant tail as we go. Doing so will help increase the durability of this pattern. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and helicopter the excess free. Grab a few more strands of pheasant tail and secure them with the tips facing out past the bead. Generally, I measure mine to be about one and a half bead lengths. Continue securing the pheasant tail on top of our hook wrapping back towards the wire. Once complete, bring your thread forward and grab some peacock curl. We'll select a couple strands, secure them to the body, and wrap back towards our pheasant tail. We'll return our thread to the bead and begin wrapping our peacock curl in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping our excess furry. We'll then take our fingers and use them to splay out our pheasant tail tips to form some legs. Once happy, we'll fold over the remaining pheasant tail fibers, secure them just behind the bead, and snip the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. The pheasant tail is a classic pattern that is one of the most known and used patterns out there. It makes for a great general pattern, imitating mayflies and caddis exceptionally well. You can find this pattern on my website, but if you would like your chance to win this fly, comment hashtag flies, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of my most used stonefly nymphs, and today I'm gonna show you how to tie it. We'll start off with some black thread and snip the excess free. Insert some lead-free wire into the bead, secure it, and helicopter the excess free. We'll then continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook and build up a thread dam for our next step. With this complete, we'll grab some biots. Here I like to use brown to add a bit of contrast. Place them in a V formation, securing them to the back of the fly. Wrap back slightly onto your thread dam that'll help splay the tails apart. Continue to secure the biot stems to the hook shank and begin building up a body transition slightly past the hook point. This'll, this'll build up bulk and give the tail section a better look. With this complete, we'll grab some medium black vinyl, secure it to the hook shank, and wrap back towards the tail. Return your thread forward, and begin wrapping the vinyl forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. Once complete, secure, taking several thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and snipping the excess free. Secure your tag end in place and whip finish, cutting your thread free. We'll swap out to a smaller thread for these next steps. Secure it to the head of the fly, snap the excess free, and grab a small piece of thin skin. Secure it to the top of your fly and wrap back towards your vinyl. Next, grab the dubbing of your choice. Here I'm using a copper ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle. Begin by wrapping just in front of your vinyl and finishing with your thread slightly in front. Grab a single biot and secure it to the side of your fly. The dubbing ball will help push it out, measuring this one to length to be about the size of our vinyl body. Do the same to the other side and snip the excess free. We'll create another dubbing noodle, again using our copper dubbing 
and wrap this just in front of our biots. Once complete, we'll fold over our thin skin, secure it tightly in place, folding it back over on itself and securing once again. With this complete, we'll repeat the previous steps two more times, bringing us to the head of the fly for a total of six legs. With this complete, you can snip your thin skin free and whip finish to hold it all in place. Next, we'll add a generous amount of UV resin, starting just slightly onto our vinyl ribbing, over the top of the thin skin, and then slightly onto the head of the fly. Fix in place with the UV light, and brush the legs free to give it a nice, buggy look. If you want to take an extra step, you can fold the legs over, pressing them with a pair of pliers in order to give them an extra buggy look. And this is the Vinyl Stonefly. Its sleek, streamlined nature helps it sink quickly in the water, but it also has an excellent profile. You can find it on my website listed below. And if you'd like to win this one, or I'll throw in six. If you'd like to win six of these, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying a spring nymph that deserves a spot in your fly box. To start, we'll grab some small wire. Here I'm using green, as well as some brassy wire in chartreuse. Select a single strand of chartreuse and two green wires. However, as for all of my patterns, you can use whatever colors you like to best match the bugs in your rivers. Secure them to the hook shank and begin wrapping well into the bend of the hook. Once complete, reverse your thread's direction and we'll begin to build up a smooth transition to form our body. Grab your wires and begin to wrap them forward in closed touching spirals, ensuring that the green remains in contact with the chartreuse, continuing to do so until we reach our thread. Once complete, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess free. Bring your thread to the head of the fly and grab some mylar. Here I'm using pearl. Secure the mylar to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards our wire. Once complete, use your thread to build up a body that's even with your wire, leaving a small amount of room at the head of the fly. And grab some pearl UV crystal flash, selecting four strands and securing them to the head of the fly. Fold your strands over and secure them back towards our wire. Once complete, snip the excess free. Next, we'll fold our mylar over, secure it to the head of the fly, and snip the excess free. With this complete whip finish to build up a small head, Snip your thread free and paint over the back, head section, and our body with some UV resin. This will add shine and durability to our pattern. And this is the Juju Betis. This particular pattern works well to imitate blue wing olives. However, it can represent a variety of insects. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's most used and successful fly patterns. To tie it, we'll grab some Vivas in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We will then insert some lead-free wire to help hold our bead in place, securing it tightly and helicoptering the strands free. We will then grab some silver brassy wire, insert this into our bead and begin wrapping it well into the bend of our hook. Once complete, we will begin building up a body transition with our thread. One simple way to do this is return your thread towards the head of the fly and then start wrapping back towards your wire, stopping just before you reach where you started with your thread. Repeating this process will make a nice transition towards the head of our fly that you can make as bulky or as slim as you'd like. Once we're happy with our transition, we will grab our wire and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to make sure the wraps are evenly spaced. Once complete, we will secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess free. 
Grab yourself some peacock hurl. I'll select two strands and secure this to the head of the fly. Securing them by wrapping slightly back on the body and returning our thread to the bead. We will begin wrapping our peacock around the head of the fly until we reach our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front of the peacock as well as behind and snipping the excess furry. And this is the zebra midge. If you would like to support the channel and pick up a few, you can visit my website here to see this and all the variations of it I like to use. And if you'd like a chance to win this fly, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment below hashtag flies. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. This tiny fly can produce huge results. To tie it, we'll start off with some tan thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. We'll then grab some small wire, here I'm using copper, securing it to our hook shank and wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point we'll reverse our thread's direction back towards the head of the fly. And build up a body transition to help add some bulk. You can do so by wrapping back towards the tail of the fly stopping just short of your starting point, reversing your thread back up to the head of the fly, and repeating this step until you reach the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll grab our copper wire and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, ensuring that each wrap is evenly spaced, doing so until you reach the head of the fly. At which point, we'll secure with our thread taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. Next, we'll grab some tam foam, trim it into a small wedge, and use your thread to secure it to the head of the fly, ensuring that it's positioned on top of the hook shank. Continue securing with your thread until it's nice and snug. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic brown, and wrap it just behind your foam continuing to add and tighten the dubbing as needed. Finishing with your thread just in front of your foam. Secure everything in place by whip finishing, snip your thread free, and of course brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is the chocolate emerger. It's made to imitate any small emerging insect and can work incredibly well behind a larger dry fly. I'd highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be tying up a variation of a woolly bugger that you should add to your fly box. We'll start off by inserting a lead-free wire into our bead and securing it tightly. Continue securing the lead-free wire back towards our hook bend, at which point we'll continue securing tightly to our hook shank until we reach the bend of the hook. We'll then grab some marabou. Here I'm using olive. Pull free a small clump of the marabou and measure it to be about the length of your hook shank. Transfer the measurement and secure it tightly to the back of our fly. With this complete, we'll fold over the marabou, wrap our thread up to the bead, folding the marabou back over and securing it tightly to the head of our fly. Snip the excess free and grab another marabou feather. This time we're using rust. Repeat the process as before and secure it to the back of the fly. Once again folding the marabou over, wrapping your thread forward to the bead, securing the marabou in place, and snipping the excess free. At which point we'll grab a black marabou feather, measure it to length, and secure it to the back of our fly. Repeating the same steps as we've done before, folding the marabou over, wrapping our thread forward, securing it just behind the bead, and snipping the excess free. At which point, we'll grab some crystal flash, securing it tightly to one side of our fly, wrapping back towards the tail, folding the crystal flash over, and securing it to the other side. With this complete, we'll snip it to length, keeping it a bit longer than our marabou, and grab some small wire. Here I'm using copper. Secure the copper wire to your hook shank, wrapping back towards your tail. Next, we'll grab some flashaboo, Select a single strand and secure it to our hook shank, once again wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll grab some peacock pearl, 
select a small clump, and secure it to our hook shank, once again wrapping back towards our tail. Set the marabou to the side and bring your thread forward towards the bead, at which point we'll grab the marabou and begin palmering it forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the peacock curl and snipping the excess free. Next, we'll counter wrap our peacock curl with our flashaboo, this time wrapping forward in open spirals. Once you reach your thread, secure the flashaboo in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab a tan colored rooster cape, select a single feather, stripping the excess free and securing it tightly to the head of our fly. Snip the excess free and begin hackling the feather backwards, first by taking a few wraps around the head of a fly before hackling it backwards in open spirals, doing so until we reach our tail. At which point we'll grab our copper wire and begin counter wrapping our feather in open spirals. This will help secure the feather in place as well as add some extra durability. Continue wrapping it forward until you reach your bead at which point secure the wire in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. Trim away your excess feather and if you used a white thread like I did, simply color it in with a marker of your choice and whip finish to hold everything in place. And this is a popular variation of the woolly bugger called the thin mint. It makes an excellent leech or a bait fish imitation and I'd highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly is an absolute game changer, and if you want to find out how you can win a few, stick around to the end of the video. To start this pattern, we'll grab an articulated hook shank pack and begin with the smallest size, starting by securing a white marabou feather. Measure it to be a little bit longer than your hook shank and secure it tightly in place. Snip your excess free, Secure your tag ends, wrapping to the back of the fly. We'll then grab a minnow body, here I'm using white, with some UV fibers worked in. We'll strip a section free and secure this to the back of our fly. Snip your excess free and wrap forward to the head of the shank. Grabbing your minnow body, brushing the fibers backwards and beginning to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals. Securing once you reach your thread. Do so by taking some thread wraps both in front as well as behind our material and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything tightly in place, snip our thread free and grab the next largest hook shank. Insert this into the eye of the other hook shank, snap it in place and remove the old one from the vise. We'll then secure the next hook shank, once again securing our thread tightly in place. You want to make sure that the section that's doubled over is secured snugly to the upper part of the hook shank. This way, the trailing fly won't be able to come loose. We'll secure our minnow body to the back of the fly, wrapping forward to the eye once complete. And once again, brush your fibers backwards and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our material and snipping the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything together. Snip your thread free and grab the next hook shank in the set. Clip this into the eye, remove it from your vise and re-secure the longer hook shank to the vise and repeat the exact same process as we have before. Securing your thread to the hook shank, wrapping to the back of the hook shank securing your minnow body and wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals until you reach the head of the shank. Secure, snip the excess free and grab the next largest hook shank. And by now, I think you know the process. We'll repeat this once more to the largest hook shank in our set. Do your best not to trap any fibers beneath. However, if you do, as I've done on this hook shank, you can take a wire brush and brush everything free. And with this complete, we'll remove the tail section from the vise and replace it with a hook. 
will secure the thread to the hook shank. Snip the excess free and continue wrapping slightly into our hook bend. This allowed a base for our next steps. Return your thread to the hook point and grab some steel wire. Connect the steel wire to the tail that we just created, securing it to the hook shank. Ensure that you secure it tightly so it can't slip loose. Continue securing, wrapping back towards the eye of the hook shank. Lifting it up and taking a few thread wraps behind it to help secure it in place. You want it to sit snug, but still be able to move around. With this complete, we'll continue securing the wire forward almost until we reach the hook eye. At which point, we'll fold the wire backwards and secure it back towards our tail. This will ensure that the wire can't slip out in the process. Snip your excess wire free using an old pair of scissors or the back of any scissors. Finish securing the wire in place being careful not to cut your thread on the sharp ends, finishing at the back of the fly, and securing some more minnow body. With this complete, we'll wrap our thread to the head of the fly, and begin wrapping our minnow body forward, as we've done several times before, doing so until we reach our thread. At which point, you can secure and snip the excess free. And whip finish to hold everything in place, snipping your thread free once complete. We'll then brush out our fly to ensure that there's no trapped fibers. This will help add a more consistent look to our fly pattern. With this complete, we'll select a pair of eyes, adding some UV resin or super glue to each side and securing the eye in place. You want to place these just slightly behind your hook eye. If you use UV resin, I'd suggest using a flexible UV resin and secure it in place once happy with a UV light. Although I would suggest using super glue. Next, grab your best pair of scissors as we'll be doing a lot of trimming. In this step, we'll begin at the head of the fly. We want the head of the fly to remain bulky, carefully trim away any excess fibers and round over the upper body section. Once you're happy with the shape, you can begin trimming up the tail. We want to trim this at an angle, so the smallest section is back towards my fingers. This is always the scariest part of any fly pattern like this. So take your time, and only take out a little material at a time, until you're comfortable with the process. You can always trim more, but can never add it back. Continue to rotate, or remove it from your vise, to continue this trimming process. Doing so until we're happy with the shape. And when we're happy, we'll grab the tail, brush it out with a wire brush, snip it flat, and if you'd like, you can add a small notch to mimic a tail. And the finished product should look something like this. And this is an articulated game changer. It has an incredible movement in the water that mimics the natural forage almost perfectly. And it definitely lives up to its name. If you'd like to win a dozen of these flies, comment hashtag mainly flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be tying up one of my all-time favorite dry flies that works particularly well for cutthroat and brook trout. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, and grab some golden pheasant crest. We'll select a single feather, measure it to be about the size of our hook shank, and secure it to the back of the fly. Continue securing it up the hook shank, stopping just short of the hook eye. Snip your excess free, and cover up the tag ends. Next, we'll grab some peacock curl, selecting one or two fibers, securing it to our hook shank and wrapping back towards the tail. Advance your thread slightly and begin wrapping your peacock curl forward until we reach our thread, doing so in closed touching spirals. We will also be doing a giveaway for this fly, so if you'd like to win it, all you have to do is comment hashtag flies and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't win and want to give it a shot, you can pick some up on my website listed below. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and continue wrapping forward while leaving a small gap. We'll then advance the thread past the peacock curl and continue to palmer the peacock curl just as before, this time making it slightly shorter. Once complete, secure with your thread and snip the excess free. We'll also snip our thread free 
and switch over to a red thread. Here I'm using a flat 140 Ultra thread. Secure it to your hook shank, snip the excess free, and use your thread to build up a prominent base. This will be the hot spot of the fly. Once happy, we'll whip finish to secure it in place and snip the excess free. Once again, switching over to our black thread. Next, we'll grab some brown saddle hackle, select a single fiber, and secure it to the head of the fly. Set it aside, and if you'd like to tie the original, grab a white calf tail. However, I prefer to use this white poly yarn. We'll place the poly yarn on top of the fly and secure it tightly in place. In order to create separation by crossing over your thread in between them in a zigzag pattern and also wrapping both behind as well as in front of our poly yarn to give it some security. In the end, it should be propped up like so. Once happy, we'll grab our saddle hackle and begin to hackle it forward in closed touching spirals, wrapping it in between our poly yarn when we get there and continue doing so until you reach your thread, at which point we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then whip finish to secure everything in place and build up a prominent head. Snip your thread free and finally trimming your poly yarn to be slightly longer than your hackle. And this is the Royal Wolf. It was my favorite childhood fly that works exceptionally well as an attractor pattern for brook trout as well as cutthroat. And I'd highly encourage you to give it a shot. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This will likely land you your first fish on a dry fly this season. To tie it, we'll start off with some small black thread and securing it to our hook shank all the way to the bend of the hook. Once we reach the bend of the hook, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly, keeping your thread buildup as smooth and uniform as possible. Once we reach the head of the fly, we'll reverse our thread slightly and grab some grizzly saddle hackle. Select a single feather measured to the size of your hook, strip a few fibers free, and use this to secure it to your hook shank. Bring your thread back up to the hook eye and begin to hackle your feather forward until you reach your thread, typically about two to three turns. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll brush all our fibers upward using our thread to help hold it in place, beginning by wrapping back on it slightly and then looping around it as you would a parachute. Continue doing so until all the fibers stand upward. Next, we'll take our thread and carefully run it through the fibers to help spread them back out as well as increase the fly's durability. Finishing with your thread just in front of our tuft. Next, we'll grab a high-vis parapost, here I'm using fluorescent green, and secure this just behind our hook eye. And fold the material backwards, using your thread to hold it in place. Once complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything together, snip our thread free, and cut your parapost to length. And this is the high-vis Noceum Midge. It offers an incredibly thin profile it's one of my go-to patterns when I see any midges or small flies emerging. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be tying a nymph that's been used to win several fly fishing competitions. To tie it, you can grab a Cock de Leon feather, or I'm just using a black saddle hackle. Strip away a few feathers and secure them to the back of the fly. We want these to be about the same length as our hook shank, and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some pearl flashaboo, secure it to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Complete, we'll reverse our thread's direction and begin building up a body transition towards the head of the fly. Your finished product should look something like a carrot and it will help hold our bead in place. Once complete, we'll start wrapping our flashaboo forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and paint over the body section with some UV resin. This will add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix with a UV light and seal your wife's or your girlfriend's eyeshadow and mix it up with some thin UV resin. Add a small drop to cover the bead as well as the body section and hit it with a UV light. And this is the Gasolina, a highly productive fly pattern that is likely in every competition angler's fly box. And there's a reason for that, so I would highly suggest giving this one a shot. Subscribe for more, and I will see you.
in the next one. Catch more fish with this one simple trick. We'll start with some flat black thread, secure it to your hook shank, and snip the excess furry. Continue wrapping to the bend of the hook and grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using gold. Secure a single strand to the back of your fly, keeping the length a bit shorter than the hook shank. Continue securing and snip the excess furry. With this complete, we'll wrap our thread towards the bead, grab some copper brassy wire, inserting it into the bead and securing tightly as we wrap back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll reverse directions and take our time to make a nice smooth body as we move towards the bead. For this pattern, I've selected to use a wax thread. If you have extra wax built up on your body like I do, you can simply smooth it out with a lighter. I really enjoy the smooth, glossy look that we get. We'll grab our brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly, taking care to make sure the wraps are evenly spaced as we move towards our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess furry. We'll select some synthetic ice dubbing, here I'm using copper, create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this just behind our bead, creating a compact dubbing ball. With this step complete, we'll grab a black CDC feather, smooth out our thread to flatten it out using our bobkin to split it in half. Insert the CDC fibers between our thread and spinning it to tighten it up. We'll begin wrapping this around the head of our fly using your fingers to give it a nice brush back look. And this is a midge I like to call the Bronze Age. This fly sinks fast, attracts attention. The added CDC feathers give this pattern an incredible amount of movement and help trap air bubbles in the process. If you'd like to pick up this pattern, you can find it on my website listed below. 